Yellowstone supervolcano shock. Well, we have five magnitude quake. It has quickly downgraded to 4.4 in order to forego any panic, I guess. And the strengthening gravity proves that magma buildup is taking place under the supervolcano. This is by Sebastian Kentley on Express UK. This was actually posted about a, a day before the big magnitude 5.0 earthquake in Yellowstone, west of Yellowstone Lake. Now, Yellowstone geologists, the USGS, can keep track of the supervolcano's magma chamber by measuring the changes in gravity within the Yellowstone caldera, scientists have shockingly claimed. And uh, as scorching magma rushes to flood the volcano's subterranean chamber, like in Yellowstone, the volcano becomes heavier and its gravitational pull increases. Similarly, the effects of gravity around the volcano are weakened when the magma chamber empties or is drained of molten rock. The USGS, US Geological Survey scientists who keep the watchful eye on Yellowstone supervolcano believes this could be an essential tool monitoring volcanic activity. The average gravitational pull or gravitational acceleration around the globe is at a steady 32 feet per second squared or 9.8 meters per second squared. But the so-called gravitational constant is not a constant at all and will change depending on your elevation and the ground you're standing on. If you're higher up, there's more of a gravitational pull. For instance, Mount Everest climbers 68 kilograms at sea level will only weigh 67.8 kilograms at the mountain summit. According to Mount scientists at the USGS, local geology has an impact on gravity due to the makeup and density of the rock. He explained in this week's issue of Caldera Chronicles that they come out every week, he says, if there is a very dense deposit of copper beneath the surface, for example, the gravitational pull will be stronger than if the substance was made up of, say, uncompacted soil. Measuring the gravitational pull at the surface of the Earth can therefore tell you something about the composition of the subsurface. The differences in gravitational pull might be too little for people to notice. But Dr. Poland said specialized equipment deployed around Yellowstone Volcano can pick out tiny spikes and drops. These machines, known as gravity meters, gravimeters, use a very sensitive spring to calculate the gravitational acceleration acting on a weight attached to the spring. If the gravity within a specific part of the park is on the rise, the spring becomes lower as it is dragged down. If the gravity is dropping, the spring in turn shortens in height. Gravimeters, though simple, are an excellent tool for measuring future volcanic activity deep beneath the surface of Yellowstone. Dr. Poland said because variations in shallow water levels and other seasonal factors are relatively small, it should be possible to see any changes caused by magma. In the future, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory will conduct annual gravity measurements in the caldera area to assess magmatic activity, combining those results with insights from deformation, seismicity, gas emissions, and thermal changes. The announcement comes after USGS scientists, in collaboration with the Royal Netherlands Meteorological Institute, conducted a series of gravity measurements in 2017. The results of the study were published March 28th of this year in the journal Geophysical Research. The geologists found the movement of groundwater levels and hydrothermal activity have not had any additional effect on Yellowstone's gravity. Overall, past gravity surveys within Yellowstone have not yielded any worrying results, and Dr. Poland said this might be the result of Yellowstone's magma being relatively deep beneath the ground about 3.1 miles deep, that is, 5 kilometers down. The deeper the magma is, the smaller the effect it will have on gravity. Now, is Yellowstone overdue for another eruption? Now, concerning the 
uh, right a few hours after this announcement was made on the Caldera Chronicles, we had the gigantic, uh, big, big, uh, five magnitude quake uh, west of the uh, caldera, Yellowstone Caldera, and uh, and of course uh, uh, about ten aftershocks after that within the hour. But uh, checking, and I'll make a separate video on that, checking on the Sidemo Berkeley map, 12 hours later, we had another big earthquake of 3.4 magnitude. Now, I don't know if that was bigger and that was also downsized by USGS, but uh, uh, that, was, that was again in the, in the same exact area as the 5 magnitude that was downsized to 4.4. And um, that's not good, obviously. And then it was um, northeast of Lima, Montana, right where the, the five uh, to downside to four point was. Something's going on there. Uh, and just in passing, we just had uh, uh, we had a point one event play uh, off Mount Rainer. And uh, that's the video before this one. You'll see that there as well. What took place there. And we had, that was, uh, let's see, that was at uh, 1259 at a 2.1 magnitude. And this one was five hours later at Wafuka Plate, 4.7 magnitude. So that's not good, because they were expecting, this is what the USGS has said, that they expected six major quakes on Cali uh, in California. The 4.7 is not at all good. But let's go back now to what's happening with Yellowstone. Now, is Yellowstone... Well, there's been deformation, as uh, Yellowstone geologists uh, have saying, a good thing for the thing to be deformed, the caldera to be deformed. There's also been uh, deformation in that it's siding, whereas the Norris geyser, where we have geyser, there's no way to predict when it will rear its ugly head. USGS said most volcano systems do not have multiple such events. When they do, the supervisors, the supervisors are not evenly spaced in time. Thirty thousand years ago, we had a smaller one seventy thousand years ago, and they claim this is USGS, of course, and. They always conservative of what they come out with. We've had 80 eruptions since then, and uh, there were lava, la lava eruptions, and they take place about every 6,000 years, they said. Finally, it's not valid in calculating a recurrence period solely on two values, two intervals between super eruptions, they said. Therefore, their calculations, the calculations we make, we may hear stating that Yellowstone with some numbers over for eruption Now we have uh, others, for example, Dr. Professor Michio Kaku claims he's a just as that Ten of them in the, in the hour of that 
Do we have them? If you'd like to join me on my Patreon, we'll hear and not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, not certainly not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenge families here in Athens, Greece. Around our church. Thank you.